Okay, so here's your lab station. On your lab station, you have your power supply, your FPGA board, uh, your LEDs and switches board, and your breadboard. Uh, and you also have a station number. So this station is station number nine. You should remember which station you're at. Okay, so your TAs will give out your uh, lab box that has all your lab equipment in it. So you're going to get a lab box that matches your station number. So we're at station nine, so we're going to take lab box number nine. Okay, here's your wiring cabinet. So you have uh, lots of wires here at your disposal. And you have all of your chips here that have numbers as well as color coding. So if you go here, you'll see 7408. This is your quad end gate, and you'll see every single one of the chips in here are going to be color coded blue for you. In your lab box, you'll have a logic probe. Hmm. You'll have a ribbon cable. Uh, you'll have wire cutters, uh, a header for the ribbon cable, and you'll also have a chip puller. Okay, so on your breadboard, uh, this is where you're going to be putting all of your uh, logic chips and wiring them all together to make your circuit. Alright, so how it works is uh, lines of holes are connected together. So if I were to put a wire here and a wire here, then there would be a connection between this wire and this wire. Okay, so wherever there is a line, uh, there is going to be a connection. So this blue line indicates a connection on this row, this red line indicates a connection here. Uh, same thing for all of these rails here as well. Uh, in the middle of the breadboard, you also have uh, uh, a different type of connection style. So you have uh, these trenches in the middle, and above the trench you have uh, columns of connections. So all of these columns upwards are connected together, and all of these columns downwards here are also connected together. Uh, so the reason for this style is going to be apparent when we start putting uh, chips onto the breadboard. Okay, so let's hook up power and ground to our breadboard. Uh, we put our power to our power terminal here. So this is going to be logic one. We hook that up to the top rail here. And let's put ground. to our bottom rail here. Okay, so now if we want to test our connections out, we can turn our power supply on and turn our breadboard on. Right, so all of these LEDs should light up mm -hmm. and this LED here should also light up. Um, okay, so then we can test whether our connections work. So we'll take our Logic Pro and we'll hook it up to the ground terminal and the power terminal. So we need to power our logic probe. Okay, so if we take it and we check any of these pins here, we should be getting a logic one or power. And there we have, it says high, and you get this high pitch tone. If we were to go here for our ground and test any of these holes here, we get a low. Right, or logic, uh, logic zero. Uh, notice that if I were to test any of these pins here, right, they're unconnected, and that's because there's a gap in between these rails here. So you'd actually have to make a bridge from here to here with another piece of wire in order to put ground to, these ter uh, to this uh, rail of pins as well. Okay, so here's your header board or header uh, pins. Um, if you look at it here, uh, there's a notch right here. And that notch corresponds to this gap on your diagram in your handout. Okay, so here you can see pin one uh, is here. So that's going to mean that this guy at the top left corner here is going to be pin one and then it alternates back and forth, one, two, three, four, uh, all the way to 40. 
All right, so in order to use the switches, uh, we're using this header pin plus our ribbon cable uh, to get the connections from our uh, LEDs and our switches uh, through this other header, through our ribbon cable, onto our other header, onto our breadboard. So let's line this up in the corner here, over our trench. And when we put it in like this, um, all of these pins at the top are going to be connected to these holes at the top. And all of these pins at the bottom are going to be connected to all of these holes at the bottom. Okay, so next we'll hook up our ribbon cable. So we'll plug our ribbon cable in here. So you've got to make sure that all of our pins are straight. And we plug our ribbon cable in. Paying attention again to the notch on our ribbon cable. So we'll hook it up here and we'll also hook it up to our switch and LED board. Okay, so now if I were to flip uh, the switches here, they'll be controlling uh, the switch pins here on the, uh, as an output from this header. Okay, and again, um, all of those pins and switches are gonna be, uh, all of the, the pin numbers are gonna be listed in your handout here. After we've hooked our header up, we can actually test that our switches are working by using our logic probe again. So if we looked at our handout, we'll notice that pin one is going to be corresponding to switch one. Uh, pin one is going to be this pin here. So when we put our logic probe, it's going to be saying logic zero. And when we look at switch, uh, switch one here, it's low. All right, so if we were to switch this to high, we're ex we should expect um, our tone to go high and logic one to be output. There we go. So we know that our switch is working. Uh, as an exercise, we're gonna hook up uh, one uh, chip uh, to our breadboard and the chip that we're gonna hook up is gonna be just an AND gate. So we have uh, a quad AND chip. So on this chip we have four AND gates, and each AND gate takes two inputs. So here's the actual chip that we pulled from our cabinet. Now, uh, on your handout, it's listed, you know, our pin numbers and their functions. Uh, but when you look at your chip, you're not really sure which pin uh, is pin one. So the way you do that is you look for this notch right here, and that notch should be upwards like this. So if you look at your notch, this pin right here is going to be pin 1. So if I put it down beside your diagram, there you go. So this pin is going to be pin 1. Okay, so let's connect our AND gate up uh, to our LEDs and switches. So we'll take our, our chip and we'll put it into the breadboard over our trench. and we'll have the notch side facing left. So our notch side is facing that way. All right, so pin one is here at the bottom, and then you could count uh, one, two, three, all the way this way, and around our chip to figure out all of our pins again. So again, look at your handout to figure that out. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna hook up power and ground to our chip. So if you don't have power and ground to your chip, uh, your logic gates won't work. So we'll put ground to ground, and we'll put power to power. Okay, and then we can verify that that's, that connection has been made again with our logic probe. So we can say, yep, that's ground, and yep, that's power. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll hook up our inputs and our outputs. Okay, so uh, we are gonna use uh, the first pin, because that's the first input to our AND gate, and the second pin, which is our second input to our AND gate, and then the third pin is going to be an output from that AND gate. Okay, so then uh, we'll hook that up to the corresponding inputs and outputs on our header. 
So now that we've hooked up our AND gate to switch 1, switch 2, and uh, LED 1, uh, these are the two inputs to our AND gate and this is the output from our AND gate. So we can go through the entire truth table for our AND gate to verify that uh, it's actually working. Okay, so if we are at 0, 0, we're expecting um, low output, right? So 0 and 0 is going to be 0. Uh, 0 and 1 is still going to be 0, 1 and 0 is still going to be 0, but if you have both on, then ta-da, you have uh, an AND gate working. You have 1 and 1, which gives 1 as an output. Okay, so now we're all done verifying our functionality and we're done our lab time. So we should clean up everything. So in order to remove uh, the header cable, you want to press down on these two, uh, uh, I guess, buttons. And then it po just pops right out. Uh, you want to turn your power off and remove all your wires from the breadboard. So when you're removing the wires, make sure you're pulling upwards. Okay. So you remove your wires, do not put the wires back into this box, the wires go back into the other uh, box in the, in the cabinet. Okay, so same thing here for the header cable, we remove the header cable, that goes back in our box, the logic probe goes back in our box. Uh, this header, you need to remove directly upwards, so pull it straight up. Right, and by pulling it straight up, you're going to not damage any of the pins underneath. So that goes back in our box. Uh, remove our power and ground. Now to remove your chips, you're going to use your chip puller. And the way that works is you put it uh, on either side of your chip. And again, you pull straight up to remove the chip. Okay, so your chip puller goes back in your box. Wire stripper goes back to the box, and your lab box goes back into the cabinet. All of the wires go back into the wire box, and all of your chips go back into the chip box.